a desert landscape with deep canyons in the distance. Active research at Grand Canyon Parashant National Monument. Clear skies and dark skies monitoring with physical scientist Ethan McIntyre. Grand Canyon Parashant National Monument is a vast and rugged landscape. Mountains and plateaus stretch far into the distance. These viewscapes are an essential feature of the remoteness that defines Parashant. Joshua Trees. National Park Service, an arrowhead emblazoned with a mountain, tree, and bison. U.S. Department of the Interior, Bureau of Land Management, a downward pointing triangle emblazoned with a mountain, river, and tree. A cactus and Joshua tree, mountains in the distance. Produced in partnership with the Great Basin Institute, an outline of a mountain. The monument preserves a vestige of the West prior to American settlement, free from intensive development. However, these views may be under threat. Urban centers in the desert southwest are rapidly expanding. In fact, one of Parashant's nearest neighbors, St. George, Utah, is currently the fastest growing city in America. Map of Northern Arizona, Southern Utah, and Southern Nevada. The outline of Grand Canyon Parashant is highlighted. It is a large area that stretches for over 70 miles east-west along the north edge of the Grand Canyon. Will this increased activity create more air pollution and haze? Are the bright lights of the Las Vegas Strip far enough away to preserve dark nights? Joshua trees in front of mountains. Time speeds up and shadows from the trees race across the ground. Physical scientist Ethan McIntyre walks in the desert and faces the camera. Meet physical scientist Ethan McIntyre. Ethan is installing a system of monitoring stations of his own design to collect data on air quality and light pollution. He works under a solar panel. He holds circuitry. He wants to know how these changes could affect both visitors and wildlife. A truck with large off-highway tires drives across the desert. A solar panel and tools rest on the truck bed. Ethan walks across the desert with a solar panel on his back. I developed this system of time-lapse imaging cameras that actually look across the landscape and we're trying to create metrics. He reaches the top of a hill and sets the panel down. One of the aspects of air quality is transparency. It's just how clear is the air and what does that mean to the visitor? How far can they see? He installs the panel. He uses a drill. He splices wires. These aren't just roadside stations. Um, a lot of these sites have to be remote location as far as getting the view shots that we want to get. A typical station involves a tripod, a solar panel, and of course the, the camera assembly. These cameras are time-lapse cameras taking an image about once every minute. What's really cool about this project is that not only am I just getting time-lapse, but I can develop meaningful metrics as in how many miles can you see across the horizon. Two men drive an off-highway vehicle on a backcountry road. Ethan takes a solar panel from its roof. Deep canyons reach far into the distance. Our setup here is about 110 watts. It's about enough to charge a cell phone, laptop, but we have plenty of power up here to run our station, get our cameras up and running. He adjusts the camera aimed into the distance. Ethan sits on a very high cliff. A rugged desert landscape stretches far below. He uses a laptop. Just check over some of the scripts here, make sure they're all where I need them to be as far as waking up and shutting down. We'll be um, leaving the station here for about six months, coming back in the spring. Ethan is in his office in front of two computer screens. One screen shows a complex equation, the other plays time-lapse imagery of a landscape. We set up two cameras at two different locations, looking at the same target. And what we're able to do is generate pixel values, basically, we look at the mountains here, along with the sky above us. Are they brighter, darker over time? And what we're able to do from there is create a, basically a ratio. We're seeing the camera and the pixel values. 
And so we actually put those values into our equation, and from there we're actually generate how visible the actual air is. So we get some great numbers off this. A spreadsheet with long rows of data. So as you can see right here, we go ahead and put the numbers into our equation. A line graph shows the visibility across a landscape measured in miles. For example, here on a really good day, we see 35 miles of clear air. That's one of our best days. On our poor days, we're seeing fire events. Here we see only maybe three to five miles of visibility. That's when we just see all sorts of smoke from wildfires come into, the, into our west half of the monument, and it really obscures our view. We also pick up you know, artificial sources, such as from road surfaces, people out there, long convoys, kicking up dust. So this is really meaningful. Uh, we're not just generating just great time-lapse images. We're seeing some really meaningful metrics as far as how clear the air is and what does that mean to the visitor experience. Clouds race across the sky any time-lapse of a mountain landscape. One of the trends we're thinking about is what is going on with, um, as urban centers expand around the monuments, how much smoke is just coming from just common urban center use, such as fireplaces and just automobiles. Time lapse of rainfall in a desert canyon. Yeah, so we're actually looking for seeing if there's any the long term trend as far as we're seeing any escalating levels of smoke and dust. So these cameras are able to pick up those trends. Time lapse of sunrise over the Grand Canyon. Time lapse of rainfall over mountains. Development and city lights threaten dark night skies as well. Time lapse of sunset over St. George, Utah. Car headlights pulse in the night. Ethan stations are equipped to monitor the night sky over Parashant and sky glow from neighboring metropolitan areas. Ethan and a time lapse camera. This night sky camera is actually special for astronomy. It has a very sensitive CMOS sensor in it. We uh, program it so that it basically stays open for 45 seconds. And we're able to capture all the natural light uh, from Milky Way, constellation stars. Nighttime time lapse of the Milky Way. Parachon dark skies are actually a remnant of what we see from the Wild West. Basically, no development. And that's what's really cool about Parachon is that we have very little development as far as structures and light bulbs. However, what we see, even from about 95 miles away, we're still picking up the sky glue from Las Vegas and Mesquite, St. George, Utah. A bull snake coiled up at night. A lot of our wildlife we see out here is nocturnal. You gotta remember these are arid landscapes, desert environments. The moon moves across the sky. A hazy glow from Las Vegas is visible far on the horizon over the Grand Canyon. So a lot of the wildlife activity occurs after sunset. And these animals rely on dark skies and the pattern of the moon going across the landscape. And so what happens when we see here, I guess this artificial sky glow, we see that it creates sort of a second moon effect. These animals are getting confused, and it's going to change their behavior. Stars move across the sky over the Grand Canyon. Desert wildlife, like humans, are synced to cycles of day and night, each in their own way. Time lapse of bright hotels, traffic, and signs of the Las Vegas Strip at night. Nearly 50 species of birds on the monument migrate at night. They navigate by the stars and become disoriented by bright artificial lights. Kangaroo rats forage less under the full moon to avoid predators. A nearby city mimicking the light of the full moon prevents the rat from being able to eat enough to reproduce. Time lapse of a thunderstorm over the Grand Canyon. Are these landscapes getting lighter or darker? Are the urban centers giving us impacts? It's really meaningful to be able to tell what our neighbors are doing out there. Stars in the Milky Way in the night. The sky glows from St. George, Utah and Mesquite, Nevada are highlighted. Time lapse of clouds moving across the night sky. Production, camera, and editing, Connor Hensel. Clear sky and dark sky cameras, Ethan McIntyre. Additional footage, aerial footage shows wildfire on Californian hills by Guardian News. Music, Canyon Breeze by Montana Skies, December Morning by Montana Skies.
LCP Locomotion Commotion Potion Premastered by Montana Skies. Lift with Six String Electric Cello by Montana Skies. Malaguena Live by Montana Skies. Tunnels by Montana Skies. Audio Description Amber Franklin. International Dark Sky Association logo. For more information on dark skies and light pollution, visit the International Dark Sky Association at darksky.org. International Dark Sky Monument. Illustration of a man and woman looking up into a starry sky. Grand Canyon Parashat National Monument is an international dark sky monument. Grand Canyon Parashat National Monument. National Park Service. An arrowhead emblazoned with a mountain, tree, and bison. U.S. Department of the Interior, Bureau of Land Management. A downward pointing triangle emblazoned with a mountain, river, and tree. Produced in partnership with the Great Basin Institute, an outline of a mountain.